I really didn't want to watch any Christmas movies after Christmas, but then 1985 turned out to be the year that Disney starts putting out holiday themed movies. <laughs> Welcome back to Ever Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Ever Disney Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to talk about One Magic Christmas. One Magic Christmas is a 1985 theatrical release. It's directed by Philip Borsos, cinematography by Frank Tidy, editing by Sidney Walensky, music by Michael Conway Baker, and it's written by Philip Borsos, Barry Healy, and Thomas Meehan. Philip Borsos is best known for The Gray Fox, The Mean Season, Nails, and This. Frank Tidy is best known for Chain Reaction, Under Siege, Stop, or My Mom Will Shoot, and The Duelists. Sidney Walensky is best known for The Shape of Water, Howard the Duck, The Sopranos, and Terms of Endearment. Michael Conway Baker is best known for The Gray Fox, Fox, John and the Misses, and Savage Land. Barry Healy is best known for The Night Before the Morning After, Big Deal, and The Gray Fox. Thomas Meehan is best known for Spaceballs, The Producers, Hairspray, and Annie. I'm about to butcher a bunch of names and I'm really sorry. The film stars Mary Steenburgen, Gary Basaraba, Harry Dean Stanton, Arthur Hill, and Elizabeth Harnoy. Mary Steenburgen plays Ginny Granger, and she's best known for Las Vegas, Step Brothers, Back to the Future Part 3, and Time After Time. Gary Basaraba plays Jack Ranger, and he's best known for Suburbicorn, The Accountant, Fried Green Tomatoes, and Charlotte's Web. Harry Dean Stanton plays Gideon, and he's best known for Alien, Lucky, The Green Mile, and Repo Man. Arthur Hill plays Caleb Granger, and he's best known for The Andromeda Strain, A Bridge Too Far, and Harper and Petulia. Elizabeth Harnoy plays Abby Granger, and she's best known for Keith, Ten Inch Hero, Adventures in Wonderland, and Chaos Theory. This is a Canadian-American film shot in Canada, and it's definitely Disney's attempt at It's a Wonderful Life or Miracle on 34th Street, a meaningful Christmas movie that really, like, reminds you what Christmas is about type situation. And spoiler alert, I think they were successful. The movie was very wonderful, but it's definitely like borderline It's a Wonderful Life because Ginny Granger, the main character, is definitely depressed. She sees like no will for living. She doesn't try to commit suicide like in It's a Wonderful Life. She doesn't even really, there's only one scene where she talks about what's worth, like what's there to live for. And an angel named Gideon and her daughter Abby are trying to get Ginny to rediscover what she can be grateful for and what everything she's lucky to have, her family, etc. This film made $13 million in the box office, which is really, really bad. It has a 47% on Rotten Tomatoes. Roger Ebert gave it two out of four stars, but I rented this movie on Amazon and this film has 473 reviews and almost a full five stars. It's got four and like three quarter stars, which is really good. And almost all of the reviews are favorable. They say they really like the movie. So I think the audience probably enjoyed this movie a lot more than critics did. I didn't want to watch a Christmas movie because Christmas just ended. And you know, like when Christmas just ends, you're ready for it to be over sometimes. And I was ready for it to be over this time, but then I had to watch this movie and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to watch one in February or May or something. Um, but the movie delivered. It was really entertaining. I really enjoyed it. There's a 10 minute section where Jenny loses her job her husband gets shot and her kids drown in a river. And I went through it. I got goosebumps twice. I cried through the end of the movie. It was really, really well done. The movie is really slowly paced, but it's not boring. It's flew by and it was really entertaining and I was never bored, but it's, it's slow storytelling. They take their time, they linger on things. There are a lot of close-ups on people so you can really connect to them. And it was just a slower storytelling method, but I want to make it very clear it was never boring. I was not bored and it flew by for me, but it was like a slow storytelling. And I don't know if that makes sense, but oh well. Also, as I said about close-ups, the scenes were also really practically lit. And I've explained what practical lighting is before, but I will explain it again. Say I had a lamp here that you could see, like a desk lamp or just a, nightstand lamp, a table lamp, you know what I mean? And I had that on and that was lighting me. That is a practical light. So when a scene is mostly practically lit, that means you're looking at the frame and there are a bunch of different lights in the scene that you can see that are a part of the environment. So like, you know, say I had lights in a ceiling fan and you see that in the shot and then I had a lamp in that corner and I had candles over here and all of that was lighting the scene. That is a practically lit scene. And there was a lot of that going on in this movie, unlike, that light right there and that light there and that light there that are all lighting me right now. That is just an off-camera professional light. That is not a practical light that would really exist in an environment. And so much of that was going on in this movie and it was made it so warm and just really great. Honestly, I really liked it. I really enjoyed One Magic Christmas. I think Mary Steenburgen did a great job carrying the film. I know her most notably from The Proposal as Ryan Reynolds' mom in that movie, so like, 
there's that for you. But I think she did a really good job carrying this movie. I enjoyed it a lot. It's definitely trying to be It's a Wonderful Life or Miracle on 34th Street, but it worked for me. The gravitas was there. I felt it. I cried. So I think I'm going to give it eight angels out of ten. Our total movie count is... Our cry count is. <laughs> Parent I told is still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. Do you watch Christmas movies randomly throughout the year? Because I don't think I have ever done that, but I'm going to be this year, I bet, because I think more are coming, so wish me luck. <laughs> Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not sure if you are, so you do, and don't be... Wow, everyone that's mean in this movie kind of, like, makes up for it. So, I don't know, the guy who's gonna, the guy who robs the bank, but then he like doesn't rob the bank. I don't know, don't be the guy who robs the bank, I guess. He was the biggest villain in the movie. You know what's next? The Great Mouse Detective. <laughs>